Oh, I'll start again. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, we were just trying to get it on to start and uh, record. So welcome, everyone, to your Jing webinar. Um, there should be a chat function for you to type away. So just to make sure that you can hear us, can you go into your chat um, function and just type yes or hello. Hi. We've got the lovely ladies from Jing. We've got Megan and Rachel here and our lovely model Rachel Rachel. As well. Rachel. Rachel's. Um, so welcome. First and foremost, we do have a pregnancy handout. So for those of you that haven't attended a webinar before, um, you've got a handout that you can download throughout today's session. Please make sure you download it before end of play. Um, and that, that's yours to keep forever. Once we do shut off, however, you won't be able to download that going forward. Um, so we've got the lovely ladies, as I said, from Jing here. They are renowned in their industry. They are well, well established, and they've definitely raised the bar when it comes to massage. So I will hand over to Rachel and Megan, and they will take you through today. Um, as I've said before, if you do have any questions, feel free to tap them into the chat function. Um, I'm here trying to control all of that, and, and Megan and Rachel will keep their eyes on you as well to, to try and answer any of your questions. But um, enjoy. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Beautiful. Okay, welcome everybody. So exciting to be here at Dermalogica, which is always one of our very favourite places to be. Um, and delighted to uh, see all you guys out there. It'd be great if you could type into the box so we know you're there because we love uh, audience interaction. So any of your questions are absolutely welcomed. And we'll either try and answer them uh, through the session or, or at the end. And um, so just a little bit about us. Um, we're the founders and directors of Jing Massage. My name's Rachel. And I'm Megan. <laughs> and we've been around for a long time in the massage industry. I know it's hard to believe because my youthful countenance and um, some dermatological products. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we've been around for a long time. I've been a massage therapist uh, and teacher for about 25 years. And I think Megan I'm only like a year or two. You're a bit of a baby, aren't you, compared <laughs> to me? Um, and Meg always says we've done everything with massage that you possibly can, you know, apart from as you say, work on a cruise ship, right? So, uh, <laughs> so you, Solana and spa owners out there, we've also worked in Solanas. We've had our own private practices. Um, we've uh, taught, obviously, for a number of years now, 16 years we've been, yeah. we've been running Jing um, and teaching loads of advanced techniques, which uh, hopefully are to give you the techniques to uh, be able to give your customers and your clients the best possible experience and also to increase um, your own business, mm. which is, uh, you know, hopefully uh, what you're here for. And I know that pregnancy massage is a, a big thing that people uh, sort of mm. wonder about. Uh, so delighted to be here, super exciting. Um, I'll just let Meg say a few words and then I'll talk you through the structure of what we're going to do today. So yeah, I'm Megan and um, I first started treating pregnant women almost 20 odd years ago when I had no idea about it and it was really scary. Um, and they had those crazy tables where you lie down on your belly and there was like all this fabric that was supposed to support the breast and support the belly. Um, and things have evolved since then and science has evolved since then. Um, and I teach pregnancy massage, I've been teaching it now for about 15 years. Um, and so I'm really excited about this way of interactive learning. So as we go along, we've picked up a couple of things um, that we think are kind of essential in pregnancy massage. And we have an amazing <laughs> Rachel, <laughs> an amazing pregnant person, pregnant person um, which is great, I feel like we're making the two Rachel show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And so Rachel's pregnant. How pregnant are you? Uh, 25 weeks. 25 weeks. Yes. Great. Right. And she's glowing and happy. And, mm -hmm. and so that's a real honor. So we'll be working through the demo and just ask questions as we go along. Yeah. And obviously every pregnancy is different. So Rachel doesn't have to be representative. <laughs> or pregnant. But um, it's good to sort of have those questions answered because sometimes things feel a little bit like oh that feels a bit too obvious I'm not allowed to answer that but always feel there's no stupid questions everything's valid and if you're curious about something somebody else is going to be curious about it so let's just have that open collegiate dialogue here yeah and that's me that is you that's my pregnant there that, that belly <laughs> that you're seeing on the screen that belly is that five gorgeous five-year-old with a lovely William and um, so the structure of the day thanks to the uh, marvelous technological hub um, at Dermalogica Central uh, we are able to give you a live demo which mm -hmm. is super exciting uh, so we're going to give a, a live demo on a live pregnant woman <laughs> of some top tips 
um, and strokes that we'd include in a pregnancy massage session. Um, and then at the end, there's going to be an opportunity for you to get your questions answered. So if you have got questions, type them in the box. Have we said that enough times? And I can see, I've got my glasses on, so I can actually see your questions as we go along. So if I'm able to incorporate them as we go along, we will. Otherwise, they'll definitely get answered at the end. So don't nick off with that cup of tea, because you might miss <laughs> your questions being answered. Yeah, that's right. Great. So uh, um, next slide, I think. I think oh, what you'll learn. Yeah. There you go, what you learn. Right, draping yeah, is often the biggest thing. As Meg said, when I first started doing pregnancy massage, it was like the worst thing. It was like, oh my God, I don't know how to cover this pregnant belly and <laughs> turning them and all that kind of thing. I got myself in the right tangle. Uh, so you learn correct draping for the pregnant woman, uh, correct positioning, which is quite important. Um, also at different, as you'll see, we've got the uh, client and sideline position, and Meg will talk a bit about that. So what positions are safe for pregnant women at different stages of their pregnancy? Um, and most of all, some top techniques. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll show you a few strokes that you can incorporate into your treatments. Um, obviously, as a whole of strokes, you can do this, so many lovely things, but we want to give you a few really juicy ones that you can go out and practice right away. Okay, so stay glued. Right. Okay, so next slide, which is our last slide we'll be working yeah. through which is the same as your handout. So we'll probably reduce that a little bit and you can use it on your handout. So the first thing is about positioning. So we've got Rachel in what we call a sideline position, which isn't so different perhaps from the recovery position. Um, it is by far the safest position. And how would you say about the relaxation element of oh, it? It's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm very comfortable right now. Super happy to fall asleep. <laughs> um, and this is a great position because we can do really perfect draping, which you'll see throughout the demo. It also enables the spine to be really straight and in alignment with the cervical spine. It allows the belly to feel really supportive. Um, and it also means that we're not putting any pressure on the abdomen whatsoever, which is obviously the core element of the safety element of um, pregnant women. This position I recommend for all pregnant women at whatever stage they are. So you might get pregnant women at like the third to fourth month. They know it's fine for me to stay on my belly, I'm sleeping at night that way. But from a massage point of view, that's really different because you're going to be offering up some pressure, there's going to be different things going on with the ligaments. So it's really a better position both for the client and for the therapist, because you also have to think about your own working. So that is the best position. And it also is a good position for about the first um, three months after pregnancy. So actually now when we look at pregnancy massage, we think about four trimesters, um, but the last trimester, I know they call it that, <laughs> I know. Um, the, the fourth trimester is also a time to be thinking about helping pregnant women or postnatally getting back on the massage table and getting back into their bodies okay. when they're ready. So it's a good business tip as well to think about not just treating somebody within the pregnancy, but to be thinking about the first three to six to year after pregnancy so you can keep those women um, in a nice place like in on your books, but also for them to feel like they have a place to go um, because things really change after the baby comes as far as there's yes. so much attention on the pregnancy, which is really great. But then you have a baby and then all the attention goes there and I'm like, get back on my body, please. Okay. <laughs> All right, so first off, Meg's going to talk a little bit about draping. So we do call Meg the draping queen. <laughs> um, so she's going to show you with this beautiful body how you can see, keep it safe and comfortable and warm, and you need a lot of pillows, basically. Pillows. First of all, last but yeah. we'll get there in a minute. <clears throat> okay, so what we're doing with draping is what we call tea draping. So we get two large towels um, at, like, at the minimum. Okay. What you want is one large towel that's actually going vertical, right? So this is going a long length of Rachel, which is what she probably, if you left the treatment room and she got into the treatment room, she'd get underneath. So it's like one long one on her body. Then when she comes in, you're going to put another drape over her, okay? So it goes across her body. So that becomes the T. That enables her to be fully covered, and when we get into abdomen massage and back massage, it means that you can tuck the drapes appropriately and keep full breast draping the whole time, and she can be <coughs> super warm, so that's important. The pillow situation is have lots of them. <laughs> you could have a pillow underneath Rachel's head, or one of these, which is a great bolster, which is a foam, and it actually gives her a bit more support. Rachel also liked, which I threw off 
Um, um, another bolster. Can we see the bolsters? I think bolster, bolster. Yes, thank you. I'm always going to be a class assistant. assistant. <laughs> and, um, another bolster that's here. So different pregnancies can feel a little bit because of the um, relaxing in the body, the ligaments, everything get a bit loosey goosey. So it's actually nice to have something strong for people to feel like they're not going to roll, and then you can put a decent amount of pressure on. A bolster or pillow between the knees can be useful, but not always. And in the last 10 to 15 minutes of your massage, especially if you're going to do any facial products, you can get somebody supine with loads of pillows and bolstering. Yeah. So I always really love my face being worked because as a massage therapist, it's something I can really turn mm -hmm. off to. So getting those pulled and getting them supine and sitting up. Semi-reclining. Semi-reclining. If you've got a table that's able to, to do that, probably a lot of you have, then that's great when you can use pillows as well. Okay, great. Yeah. So that's kind of our draping situation. Can I also say this position is so super comfortable. I remember when I first received these techniques uh, in a massage class, everybody was falling asleep. So yeah, yeah. They're, they're not just techniques that you can use with pregnant women. So there are a lot of clients who can't lie prone yes. um, because of back pain, that kind of thing. So these are also great strokes to point to all your treatments. And the draping situation then becomes, Rachel takes her hand out, so I asked her to take her hand out, she then puts it across her body and holds the bolster, then if I want to access her back, I undrape like that, I know you can't, but it's like her whole back is going to be exposed, <laughs> and then I can tuck the drape underneath here, okay, so I get her whole back, but this, this beautifulness is covered, um, and when we go through the strokes, we're going to do some abdomen massage, and you'll see how I can fold the drape up. Okay, all right, so that was the draping, which was the first circle to the left on your hand out. Uh, the next circle to the right is called palming. So um, if any of, uh, I know some of you out there are at the Vertical Island, which was fantastic, um, and you might remember some of the, uh, we showed you like a palming stroke that we do. So a lot of the things that we do, you can adapt for sidelining. Mm -hmm. So um, Meg's now actually, she can work actually over the drape, which is a really nice thing to do at the start of any treatment. Um, and this is a stroke that's adapted from Shiatsu, where she's going to be coming into a kneeling Tai Chi stance, and then she's just going to be working down with a bit of compression. So no circles, no oil at this point, but it's just a way for the client to get used to your stroke. In Chinese medicine, also there's a meridian, an energy channel called the bladder channel that runs all the way down the back. And so you're also working this, which is really good for health and vitality. So I've just explained that because actually what's going to happen is Meg's going to disappear and you're not going to see her. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's going to look like she's doing nothing, but I was doing everything. Through. So the first thing to do is when you work with a pregnant woman, there's going to be a lot of moving around with the towels and the drapes. So we yeah. need to really make sure we do some grounding. So a hand on the head and a hand on the sacrum is a really great starting position. It's nice to do a couple of breaths together. So we're just taking a nice deep breath in with me and out and in and out. And it might be appropriate just to be here and it also might be appropriate to be here. Um, before, even though a woman's come to a pregnancy massage, make sure in your consultation that you ask her if it feels comfortable for you to work on her belly so that you have permission. You, and that might be even if you're working throughout their pregnancy every time they come in because the pregnancy always keeps changing. So always ask permission, which we did before. <laughs> then I'm going to go into some palming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Rachel's shoulder here. Let me drop it. <coughs> and I'm going to use this mm -hmm. hand and I'm just going to ease in on, like that across her, um, her rectus spinae. And I'm in a kneeling position and I'm just going to lean in. And you can see just by that gentle rock of her body. Yeah. So Meg's doing this, I'll do a sort of air attendant demonstration <laughs> at the same time. Um, um, and also the question, yes there is only one page of the hand out, I just saw that one. Yeah. <laughs> we just did a, you know, yeah, a really right. good body. Picture yeah. speaks a thousand words. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming down. So Meg's coming down and she's moving in so you wouldn't be able to see me if I knelt down but Meg's basically kneeling down in what we would call sort of Proposal stance, old fashioned proposal stance. Yeah. Okay. And you just do that to get to know the body, get to have a sense of you know what they're doing and how you're doing an assessment. You could take that all the way down and you can also um, palm down the whole lateral side of the body. So this is definitely the best camera angle for us to show you all the really good stuff. So that was the right choice. So that's palming. 
The next thing we're going to do while we keep still keep her covered is stretches. Yeah, arm yeah. stretches. So now we do some arm stretches. So these are important for a couple of um, reasons. And um, one of the things you might find with pregnant women is they can get numbness and tingling down the hands. And this stretch is actually a great one for releasing pressure around the pectorals. And the pet minor muscle can compress a nerve called brachial plexus, which can cause numbness and tingling down mm -hmm. the hands. Uh, so this is great clinically as well as feeling great. And nobody else in your town will ever <laughs> receive this arm stretch. These take from time massage, aren't they? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lift <coughs> the arm directly out. And actually, if you can see in your picture in the handout, you can also, if you want to, get up on the table. So you can just also lean up, depends on the length of them and you and how you are. Then you can also take the arm off the front of the body. And if I hold above both joints, so if I hold above the elbow and above the wrist, I can also lean back. This also stretches out all down there, which is really beautiful. And I can also put my hand here, which kind of also deals with the particular store so I would put my hand there. And then I can do a super fancy one, which is I can take the arm just gently sort of into a triangle, and I can do a little bit of work here. So all of this is it's not like prep work, but it's sort of beginning before you're doing any deep effort and stuff like that, just so they kind of get to know each other. You know, you guys get to know each other. And you can also put your knee behind the scapula and then just stretch. And that's a really back. great pet stretch. How does that feel, right? Yeah, it feels really nice. Yeah. Okay, so the breasts are starting to get bigger. There's going to be a lot of this happening, mm -hmm. no matter how proud we are. <laughs> um, and so it's just nice to open up the body. Great. The next thing which we're going to show you um, is actually the last circle yeah. in your handout. Can I have some You can. So materials? the question is always, what products can I use on pregnant women? And Dermalogica are awesome. And obviously, they've got right here some products that you can buy and which are fantastic. Meg's going to use this one, just in the oil-free massage. Well, I believe there's also a newer product, which is also really lovely, this massage gel cream. And if you want to add some aromatherapy oils, then there's a calming botanical mixer. So you don't even have to worry about knowing what um, aromatherapy oils are okay or not. So there you go. Okay, so for head and neck and shoulders, so often pregnant women, like everybody else, have headaches or attention in the neck, this is a good starting point. So like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? Headaches or attention in the neck? Oh, so a bit of really. yeah. okay, right. um, And then you're going to put the oil on your on you <coughs> rather than on her, so on your hands and on your forearms. I'm then going to start by kind of what I often call the dosey do -si -do, so elbow to elbow. <laughs> the top hand is wrapped around mm. the shoulder, so, and I can put my hand on base of her skull and just do a really gentle trapezius stretch yeah and I can bring that forward mm. so that is all about the shift of Meg's weight there yeah so one hand and then she's just bringing her weight into the back leg there and that's really stretching that muscle there the trapezius um, and trigger points, which are little uh, contracted knots in the trapezius, can without a doubt contra uh, contribute towards headaches. So this is a fantastic one. Okay. <coughs> then we can do, as in the picture shows, a forearm. Mm -hmm. So we can just lean in and bring that forearm right up to the occiput and then lean back. So top tip with this one is always when you use your forearm, floppy wrists, yeah? So we always think, the general tendency is to think, oh, if I'm working with a forearm, I'm going deep to really have a kind of you know, boxing, a kick fighter fist. But actually it's the opposite. If you have a nice soft uh, wrist, that makes your arm really soft, and that makes it really lovely to feel. And I think if you can just look at what Meg's doing, it's all about how her body is moving. It's a dance around the table rather than standing and coming from the shoulders and arms. And um, so a lot of massage therapists end up with hand, wrist, shoulder, arm issues, particularly if you're doing a lot of treatment. But if you work in this way, you're always working from your belly, your legs, really good body mechanics which are taken from Tai Chi, um, then you won't hurt and you'll give the best possible experience to you know, what you do there, mate. And then a third <laughs> variation, depending on your body, is you can use a soft fist and you can just lean in and really get traps and scalenes. And it's like my front leg is straight, my front leg is bent. My front leg is straight, my front leg is bent. And 
I feel like I do it all day, Rachel. Lee. Oh. <laughs> I am crappy. Yeah, yeah right? I thought that. Yeah, just said it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you can, you know, work in there a little bit with your thumbs. But as we said, we really try to not do that so much. So if you're feeling like there's a point or anything, you can hold it. This is also a great position to do anything around the head, work around the gallbladder, <coughs> in, you know, old fashioned um, shampooing massage, which we love. That's all super great. And then you can kind of reiterate and you can bring the stretches back. If I could also say something about the speed that Meg was working, because I know a lot of people are taught to work a lot faster, but um, we really advocate slowing down. So actually that work is not superficial, it's quite deep and it's clinical as well as being relaxing. Yeah, so good clinical massage gets an outcome um, and uh, relaxation massage doesn't have to be two different things. Yeah, so um, slow it down. And you can just, you know, all the, from this position, you could do lots of hand work. As Rachel said, um, a lot of women get like what is diagnosed as carpal tunnel syndrome throughout the pregnancy, so you can do lots of work here. Usually there's just a bit of edema there, so it's just yeah. a bit swollen. It's so even yeah. though it's <laughs> a demon, um, a demon a there, demon. and you can kind of work around the wrist and the fingers. So it's a really good position. You just have to get yourself used to it. Um, and the other position, just so to kind of get a sense of it, the draping. If you were going to do some back work, mm. is to take the towel and then, as I said, you would um, take it over in this, which is the word that is called fold, fold the position, the towel. Mm. And then you can do lots of effleurage from this position, so you might not be used to it, but you kind of just one palm and you're just going right up the erectors and coming up in what we call like a teardrop position. So just, it's not, pregnancy massage isn't sort of rocket science, but it's just knowing how to use your body and work with the pregnant body. Um, and anyone who doesn't feel like being on their abdomen for too long. So some of this stuff works really well. People just really <coughs> generally have low back pain. So that's what we're kind of doing there. And then the last slide is uh, some nice stretching. So um, you'll see there, uh, so that one in the middle, yeah, on the, on the bottom, uh, that's a nice cross hand stretch. So you can do this on loads of different areas of the body. But this is really nice to open up the uh, thoracic region and the low back region as well. So um, we'll talk okay. about that one. So to work the abdomen, we're going to take away the dra the bolster. <laughs> and then we take this drape and we cover, not your face, but your arms. <laughs> super great. So now also her breasts are being covered so she feels super safe. Then we take the towel, and in treatment, we don't go to dial, but as we get to dial, oh, no, no. <laughs> so we undrape. It's really a good idea to actually do a tiny bit of grounding also before yeah. you undrape the abdomen, because even if the pregnant woman has given you permission, it's quite vulnerable, isn't it? Yeah. In different, yes. different yes. pregnancies Absolutely. in all different ways. Yeah. Um, so we're there, and we might feel a bit of a kick, which is an honor beyond <laughs> all honors. <laughs> And then we undrape, and then you just tuck around like that, and then you can do a hold. So where you want to be is under the navel and above the pubic bone, and you want your back hand to be um, on the sacrum, so you're mirroring the position. And then the picture there is what we call cross-handed stretch. So I'm putting one hand on the iliac crest Beautiful. and one hand on the rib cage. Yeah. And then I'm going to just take a breath in and I'm just gently offering up the tiniest bit of weight in order to encourage a stretch. And why, Rachel, is this why a good place to offer a stretch? So do it. Um, so Meg's actually doing what's called fascial work there now. So some of you might have heard of fascia, which is the connective tissue uh, which runs in and around and through, through the muscles. Um, so the big thing about fascial techniques is you actually need to do them before you put a lot of oil on the body. So Meg hasn't put a lot of oil on, so this is a great place that she's doing it. And this just really opens up the low back, but also the uh, thoracic area and the mm -hmm. rib cage, right? Which get yeah. that really compressed in pregnant women. And um, a lot of pregnant women often feel like, um, you know, difficulties with breathing, with the breath, mm -hmm. just feeling compressed in, in that region. So this is a really nice opening up. And if you want to do it as a fascial stroke, then 
you need to stay there for about three to five mm -hmm. minutes and really tune into what's happening underneath your hands. And the QL is there, right? So that's also yeah. a place where a lot of women get a lot of them back pain. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it feels just like you've taken a lot of pressure off it, like just instantly. So yeah. It feels a lot right. Better. That's great yeah. feedback. Yeah. So often it might look like not a lot is happening, but it feels pretty significant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, you know, what we always are trying to do at Jing is trying to get the therapist to work less yeah. and get a lot more kind of profound results. So we have that. If I wanted to be super fancy, I could also, which is the top hand, there we go. I could also take the arm over, which is really nice, and hold um, the drapery. I show you this muscle. So you can really also kind of and remember that pregnant women are pregnant, they're not breakable. <laughs> so I think a lot of um, feedback pregnant women say a lot is that the treatments weren't like real enough, people were a bit too scared. So for sure do training, you know, we do, but it's just remember, you know, it's just remembering things you have to remember, but not just kind of really stay away from anything in particular or too too overly cautious. And then we're going to work to the belly, which is always mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do some belly circles. Yeah, little girl. Yeah. yeah. Little girl. Little girl. And one of the things about the pregnancy or the belly circles is if you can see my bottom hand, I'm really, it's not a lot of pressure, but I'm really going down and I'm really scooping and I'm putting my hand between the belly and the table. And there's a gentle lift up, would you say. And that's about two things, bringing the pressure off the body, but also it's the fullness of the stroke. So a lot of times at Jing, when we do like um, an in-house clinic, we'll get a lot of pregnant women to come to class. Their feedback will be like, please, if you're going to touch the belly, just do it. So the idea of being a bit, I'm not so sure from there, it can be a little annoying, right? It's a little frustrating. So yeah. it's like you want the cops to feel the confidence of the full yeah. belly. And psychologically with pregnancies, it's a really therapeutic thing to do is help the integration of the belly with the body because sometimes it gets kind of two yeah. separate things and at this point in time for sure you're one. <laughs> and but also a lot of the time the only time the belly gets twitched is in a medical situation yeah. isn't it? With a, so that's just really lovely. So the mirroring of the circle so we can see one hand under the other and then the only other stroke I really use a lot is kind of rays of the sun. So I can use the navel as rays of the sun, the sun. and you can kind of have some diagonals. Yeah, and you can also just pull up from this position towards the center. So that tends to be enough. I mean, I'm sure you all have lots of questions about what if this, what if that, so I'm happy to answer all of those. But that tends to be kind of what you're working at. And um, this position also, the order of things that you want to be doing is sort of grounding the person, a little compression, all the palming, mm -hmm. then do the neck and shoulder period of time, then do the back, then the belly, then incorporate the legs and the hands, mm -hmm. and then from this position, you can see, because she's just on her side, it's quite an easy turnover, so what we don't want the clients to do is then have to feel like they have to flip, so I'm sure somebody taught me this, but I can't remember, yeah. so it might be one of the things I feel like, I'm not sure I invented, but it's like, this is smart, is to take the legs over the side of the table, the client sits up, mm. and then she just drops down the other side, so you have pillows on both sides, and then you can work the back and then the shoulder from that side, so this is a much better position, and it takes a bit of practice, and you should do it with your friends with a... <laughs> <laughs> pillow, you know, but that is a much better position than trying to roll people over. Um, so I know we've sort of picked out a few techniques for the viewers. So generally, within an hour's treatment, people were doing sort of 50 minutes to an hour. How long would you spend on each yeah. So if I had a 50 minute session, I would be looking at, um, you know, two minutes of grounding and palm in. I'm not exactly right now, but two, you know, two to three <laughs> minutes of that. Then you would be looking at five to seven minutes of neck and shoulder, so I'm kind of at the 10 minute mark. 10 minutes um, of the back, 10 to 15 minutes of the back. Then five minutes on the legs. I would do the abdomen then, so it's not the last thing you're doing. Do the abdomen on the, this side, which is on the left side, so you wanna also start on the left side because of the, being in Kabbalah, like the, the flow, 
and then we turn them on the right side and then you do all of that again minus the abdomen does that feel about right? Somebody's yeah, yeah. adding up my That was a much bigger breakdown than I was. But uh, <laughs> sort of like 20 minutes on each side and yeah, then so some 20, semi-supine for the face. Yeah, it's like 25 minutes on one side, yeah. 20 minutes on the other, and then five yeah. minutes for the face. Yeah, for yeah the face. and that's, that's it. Right. Semi um, position. And in all positions, you don't want anybody to stay at anything too long, but you want to give them enough time to be relaxed. And I think, you know, we've shown you a few strokes which I absolutely want you to go out and incorporate. But also, a lot of this is about adapting things that you might already know. So mm -hmm. don't feel like, oh, I don't know how to do a pregnancy massage. Um, the main thing really is the positioning mm -hmm. around the sideline. And you can absolutely adapt things from things that you already know to the sideline position. Um, so maybe we can go back and just do a recap and review all the strokes mm -hmm. that we've done yeah, yeah. and, and if there's anybody have questions. any more questions you can ask us i mean the, <coughs> the top tip thing has to do with booking and if there's any questions about um what's happening with their body at any one time period I mean, there's usually lots of questions and mm -hmm. um, that's a really good question there so is it true every pregnant woman um needs a letter from the midwife for insurance purposes that's between you and your insurance company so that is dependent on the insurance from a if your insurance isn't asking for that absolutely not a woman is it has the right to get treatment where she wants but whether you're insured or not that's between you and your insurance company the letter from the, i have so i'll just say personally when I'm in private practice I'm not asking for a letter of, for a midwife or a GP if the pregnancy is normal. The other thing I want to say is you 99.9.9.9.9% of the time you need to have had a full pregnancy training in order to be insured. So if you are a massage therapist who has been training, treating pregnant women in reflexology, you might be insured just for the reflexology, but you might need to look at your insurance company and ask them what training. And obviously we do a three-day training there are longer ones and then there are shorter ones. So you have to figure out what works best for you. And from with our training, um, everybody's insured to massage women from throughout the first trimester, second trimester, and third trimester. It depends on your training and your insurance. So that is that. <laughs> okay, so quick so we the have the grounding. grounding. Da -da -da. Yeah. Um, a bit of grounding perhaps on the whole body ground through the abdomen. Then I would be in a kneeling stance and I would do some great erector work. Yeah. yeah, and I could do that with an open palm or I could also use a soft fist, making sure I'm on the muscle tissue rather than the bones. Then what I'm gonna do is take the arm <coughs> and do some, do some, do, and then do some stretching. So what I did here was just take her arm and also, Gets her to be a bit, you know, I get to assess the limbs and like what's happening with elasticity and then taking the arm over. And she's like, oh, this is a different massage. I'm going to relax. This is going to be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we did that. Then we also took the arm over here and we can do some nice compression work. Nobody ever gets touched there. So nice. It is so nice. Then we did this fancy move where you put the arm up and then the knee between the scapula so we can open up the pads, yeah, which nice is really nice. Really beautiful. Okay. And then refold it. And then I got my dosi -si dough on. <laughs> so then I did a stretch, so holding yeah, at the stretch. Yeah, the ox foot and leaning then back. leaning back. Yeah. And I say two to three times because at first I can be yeah, a little resistant. It's really nice just to take the minute out of it with a nice slow rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then forearm. a forearm. Yeah, floppy wrist, remember. On spot five, so if you're not sure. Floppy wrist. Beautiful. And slow speed. And then soft fist. And the body likes, you know, odd no, numbers. Body likes threes. So threes is yeah. always good. So taking that back three slow strokes is delicious. And see how I try to move away. And, then and with your three. fist, imagine that you're holding an egg in your hand, so it doesn't have to be a really tight fist. And we do actually make our students do this. Let's <laughs> rope one here. Nice. So, like, soft Because you're still here, I can add a couple of things. So I can do yeah. some, um, it's not really circumduction, but it's like elevation, depression, protraction, retraction of the scap, that kind of opening up the body. Yeah. Then I leave the arm there so she feels nice and safe. I could put a bolster back. 
I take the dray, um, which I have, because I've had to change my massage here, which originally would have been like that, and I can take it over and roll this down, and then I'm going to do some effleura. So I'm going to start at the back and lean up and come over. So I'm going to do one side, or I can take two hands and I can put them on either side of the erectors, just making sure that I'm in a pretty decent position, not looking here but in my back. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of be here. Then we did um, some abdomen work. So then we take the drape, the arm up a little bit higher, make sure she's nice and covered here. Take the drape down. Have a hold of respect. Really open up the side body. This can also help with um, low back pain, but eventually if they start to feel like sciatica, it can sometimes be coming from the QL. So this is a really great position. Do some gorgeous circles with permission, making sure we go all the way to the table and really connect with that. Rays of sunshine. Okay. <laughs> feel the feel it, um, baby. <laughs> um, always make sure you have extra. So actually, Rachel's temperature has changed, which always happens in the side, but it happens a little bit more in pregnancy. So make sure you have loads of covers. Um, and then you could work from this position, even through the drape. You could do some compression of the legs. Yeah, and back to the legs, something in America we used to call Charlie, Charlie yeah, horses, yeah, like cramps. leg cramps can mm -hmm. happen quite a lot. And then remember all the, all your beautiful things around, you know, hand massage, which we love. So you can be here and do this work here, so I can, and then work through here. And if there's any edema on the wrist, yeah, we're doing, um, lots of work around lymphatic drain, you know, just doing this kind of work can be really great, opening up the wrist. And generally, I just think pressure should be appropriate and not overly cautious. Like, you should have yeah. knowledge, but I think if you want to treat pregnant women as they want to be treated, yeah. treat them how you want to be treated, you know, and just be aware of the pregnancy, ask all the right questions around what's going on with their pregnancy, know your red flags, your yellow flags, um, which will all come from your trainings, and then be respectful and mindful of being well, informed, isn't yeah. it, rather than being gentle. Sometimes when people are scared, they just do a super feather line. Yeah. yeah. So any questions? We'd love thank to you so thank much. You so thank you. Much. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. How was that? It was amazing. Yeah. Really yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, can you say a little bit about the pressure? Probably here is where I really massaged you. Yeah, yeah. So um, I guess just the pressure has felt really good, and it felt good to have like proper strong contact on there yeah. as well, yeah. um, which is definitely something I like in massage. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so probably not massage related, but Amanda Randall's asked about bolsters and yeah. what okay. you recommend from a comfort point of view. Okay. Yeah. Um, those I mean, are good. Those are good. good. So <laughs> wherever Dermal Logic have got those so, from. Is great. So I say they're fairly standard. They're foam. Like, yeah. So foam is actually in pregnancy, I think, better than yeah. like a feather pillow. So I love pillows and I love feather pillows. But first of all, the allergy stuff around the feathers, so because women's allergens can be up. But um, foam gives more support and that kind of helps with the roll. So one bolster underneath the neck, one between like and here, and we use, like, we use like things like massage warehouse and things like that. So you know you should be able to find them super easily online, phone yeah. bolsters as well. Most looking place, and wherever you get your linens from, if you get specific couch linens, we'll probably have bolsters. The other, um, but yeah, you want the soft ones because sometimes they're super hard, don't they? Yeah, and the other bolster you might want to think about is just like something super tiny, like um. Yeah, I think like airplane pillows, yeah, yeah. like airplane yeah. pillows, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, where actually sometimes women like a bolster, just a thin one between the um, belly and the oh, table yeah. so that the belly doesn't fall. People's, our beautiful belly, and it's like the most perfect example, is like solid and you just 
standing sometimes my belly was just like you know the alien like just stretchy and loose and there wasn't any form and actually having some support underneath that can make a woman yeah. feel more comfortable i mean these are great but don't get hung up on those are like a pillow is fine if you yeah want to have a or actually well, a yoga so. um you can get yoga bolsters like this which are more like seeds and that's also super great yeah cool uh, melanie toza has mm -hmm. said would you do the face lying on her side too no so i would do her face supine yeah if you want to if it's part of your essential massage so that's five to ten minutes what rachel said was called the semi semi yeah semi reclining so basically if you've got a table that elevates you'd want to elevate it say 45 degrees otherwise prop them up on a pillow it's like a t position so you can have one long pillow and then a couple of um, pillows across yeah. in the t you really and that's enough that. just to bring them up a little because bit blood flow. you don't want the baby basically being directly on the inferior vena cava yeah it's a bit Rebecca Covet's just clarifying about so we shouldn't treat pregnant women without specific training. That's about you and your insurance yeah. company. So that's why I just want to say to you about that is yeah. just to know that there are often in your insurance is um, different clauses around pregnant women and things like stones. And I just want to say because I can, there is no research that demonstrates that yeah. there's any problem massaging women in the first trimester at, at all. And many cultures do it like as a matter of course like as soon as you find out you're pregnant you get a massage from your aunt and, you know that's part of the culture our culture is a little bit scared because the first mm. trimester is the most likely time that somebody might have a miscarriage from a business point of view and um, there is a concern that perhaps there might be any um legal activity would happen around that but mm. it actually there is actually no base that <coughs> a massage would cause and you know yeah, miscause yeah. cause anything so just know that but just know that you know from a you know, your staircase, a trip and fall is more concerned than you know, what you're doing yeah. with your hands. And I also think as well sometimes there's uh, some misunderstanding about who should give informed consent to the treatment. It's the client who gives informed consent, so yes. So sometimes people feel they have to ask doctors, you usually don't get back to you, all that kind of thing. But actually it's the client who decides whether, you know, they want the treatment or not, yeah. So um, as long as they, yeah, as long as they understand so about the treatment. Uh, <laughs> For your own, you know, yeah. sanity. I mean, yeah. it's just that kind of thing. I think the training gives you confidence. Yeah, and I went and did, you know, I've been training, mm. I've, I've been doing pregnancy massage for 20 years. It was part of my initial training, luckily, in the States. But then, like, when I um, got pregnant and I was doing lots, I went and got doula training, which is actually only a five day training, which is like a, about birthing. And it just gave me loads of information. I never did it as a job, but it just offers you up a lot of information. So it's, you know, if our pregnancy training like three days, you think, well, that's a weekend. And then you could add a whole new things to you and then you know all the things that are happening in the different trimesters what's happening and even if you've been pregnant you forget so and your pregnancy will be really different than lots of other people's pregnancies um yeah uh, i think you've already mentioned this already but about the towel between the knees for comfort it's an option so some women like their hips to be flat um so a towel or i wouldn't put anything too big mm -hmm. so not too much towel but that's just an <laughs> option i have loads of things on hand mm -hmm. And how much do you charge for a massage? <laughs> <laughs> yes. How much do you charge for a massage? That's always a great question. Yeah, so, you know, for a massage, we, you know, we're charging 75 to 100 pounds for our individual clients. And our gym massage therapists tend to charge about 50 mm. to 75 quid. Um, depending on where we, they are, but we, I, we believe that no massage therapist anywhere in the UK should be charging less than fifty pounds for an hour of their time. Yeah. We, know, we know there's a lot of people out there, and we always get this coming up in class. People say, "Oh, we can't do that in my area," but you always can. There is always a demographic of people. But I would say, yeah, um, don't don't do it. Don't um, charge more for pregnancy massage or charge no. more for stone massage. Just charge well for a massage. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to bring all that information in, and probably the most people you're going to get is from your initial pregnancy. Your initial clients will become pregnant. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it is a great way to build your business because everybody wants a massage when they're pregnant, even if they're not. And lots of people pay for other people to get massages when they're pregnant. So that's super yeah. great. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, hello everyone. Um, I've been off camera, so hopefully that there was just a couple of you who had some issues, but I think we resolved them, which is, which is really great. Hopefully, you've enjoyed today. It's been wonderful having you both here. It's been really just 
my yeah. opening and it looks amazing. Yeah. Rachel. It was. <laughs> Megan and Rachel are from Jing. So Jean is based down in Brighton. They do online courses as we well. Do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so please, please look these guys up. They are amazing at what they do in their field. Um, and try and just add to your repertoire, like they said. You can do these um, online courses or come down and see them. Mm -hmm. um, try and build what you, you sell to your clients and just get some more things under your belt. So we will be staying online just for the next five or ten minutes. You're more than welcome to leave if you've got to go. Yeah. Um, but if you want some more questions answered, um, you know, these guys will be hanging around just for a little moment. So yeah. thank you for joining. We'll hopefully thank you see guys. you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Be in touch. Be in touch. Anything, yeah. anything that comes yeah. in, you can always send us your questions. Yeah. 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 As we get left over, send them over. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, best oils to massage with? Yeah, the cleanest stuff. So yeah. Dermalogica has researched what works best. For like what they have in their line, which you are. You could probably say more about that. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> I mean, dermatological stuff is always on the way, so. So, we have got our massage gel cream, mm -hmm. which launched in January, um, replacing the oil free massage and the massage cream. So, this is like a gel cream hybrid, perfectly safe to use on mm -hmm. pregnant clients. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, essential oils we can't always use on pregnancy. Um, so we have got our calming botanical mixer, which is the water-based elements. So you still get the smells, but you don't get any of the oils that go with it. So have you actually smelled this yet? Mm, it's amazing. What do you think? It's super fresh. I love that. Very fresh. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you want to give your massage a bit more of a aroma style, you're more than welcome to put that into your smells. Um, and I just say, as far as other stuff is concerned, two things. One, the cleanest, so basics, no smells, no um, aromatherapy unless it's been tested and you know where it's coming from. Um, and two, I just put it in front of a pregnant woman's nose before, so that's always really good practice. It also helps pregnant women feel empowered um, as part of the process, so they always love that. It's like, how does it smell to you? And it might smell good one week and not good another week. Where can I look up your courses? Yeah, you can find us. You can find <laughs> us, yeah. Um, so jingmassage.com is the website, www.jingmassage.com. And we also, Line Dermalogica, love to chat, yeah. So the phone number is 01273 628 942. And there's a lovely woman called Nina on the end of it who would love to hear all about you and direct you towards And I think courses. we're doing a pregnancy course in May. We do them sort of twice a year. Um, and I think one of the coolest things about it, which I didn't come up with, actually Nina did, was bringing the pregnant women in on the third day. And I think it's really essential, like just even this five second conversation with Rachel, is to get feedback from pregnant women who are not necessarily paying clients and you're not kind of in that tight turnaround. And you can ask all the kind of questions that you might feel a bit intimidated to to ask your clients because then they might not might think you don't know stuff. It's great to be able to be in an environment where you feel safe enough just to ask all the questions to make you feel confident. What would you say for me? Oh, God. 01273 628 yeah. 942. And the same phone numbers. Well, that's the only years to be our house number. We've got, um, can you use Songbird? No smell. Yeah, yeah love Songbird. Yeah, so Songbird's lovely. super good. Yeah, Check it nice. out. Same, same deal, put it in front. But it's really nice. It has like the wax. I mean, generally we like a, you know, a no oil base or a wax. Something that's got a bit of friction. So that stuff that I just used was really fantastic. Yeah. Um, Ruth, you didn't miss any theory in the first 10 minutes, I don't think. Yeah. We, we yeah. Did, you know, we decided that this was really about a, a hands-on thing. And, you know, if this is something that you really <coughs> want to do, even just pick up, like, pregnancy books. It's good to sort of get yeah. a sense of what happens in the first trimester, what happens in the second trimester. And when I teach, that's what we do a lot of kind of engaging with just remembering how it's feeling and oh yeah that was the I did think I thought I have a very profound thing to say I couldn't remember what it was. <laughs> um, I, on another note I want to also put out the reality that pregnancy isn't always the joy of bubbles and champagne and yeah. and balloons and it's a little bit in our culture that every time we meet somebody if we did with you and you were smiling yeah. and saying like congratulations it's amazing yeah. and it is incredible but remember there's a lot of emotional things that can happen throughout a pregnancy there's excitement and there's like oh my gosh what have i done and you go through all that so being a really good therapist throughout that pregnancy and being able to hold somebody's space and just saying how are you without jumping into like 
can actually give women such an incredible place of sanctuary. So that can also be happening in your spas and salons and your treatment rooms. So you can be a, a voice of like, I have you, which is really fantastic in pregnancy and postnatal. Is it safe to massage the feet? Good question. Yes. Uh, yes, basically. So um, yes, there are acupressure points that um, have strong descending energy, which if you, you know, really well versed in acupressure, you can use if you want to bring on a pregnancy. Um, but you have to be very, very specific and have a very strong intent in order to be able to, you know, press those points. So a lovely, nice uh, foot massage is a fantastic thing to mm -hmm. like to, uh, to the treatment. So, yeah, so, you know, so don't worry about like that. in the training, we go through all the, <coughs> the in, like all the points that are contraindicated, but they're also super good in birth. <laughs> yeah. So it's like because those are downward energy points. But there's no area that's unsafe to treat. It's just about you having appropriate pressure and yeah. intention. So that's all the questions. Great. Great. Thank you, girl. Um, it's more about your training. Yeah. What would you like to know, <laughs> Ruth? Um, three days, two or three times a year. It usually happens over a weekend. The first day is souped up practical. <coughs> so we do a full body treatment. So from head to toe, everything detailed. And we work on the idea that pregnant women might have real like just general stuff like headaches and low back pain so we don't have to not treat the general pain of pregnancy. And then the second day we do all the theory and so we play around with what's happening in the trimesters, contraindications, red flags, all the things you might need to know in which you might want to refer them on to the midwives. And then the last day as I said is really fantastic where all the pregnant women we can find <laughs> Pull them off the street yeah. and come in and actually the whole class so that might be between 10 and 20 massage therapists treat almost every pregnant woman in the room so we go around and we treat every pregnant woman in the room so that way you get to treat pregnancy so they obviously come in at all stages so usually you're working on pregnant women from four months to the point in which they might be giving birth you know I had last course I had a woman at 44 weeks wow. so you know, and I've had a woman call and say, I can't commence it, I'm giving birth. Um, but usually that's somebody who's in their third, you know, third pregnancy and they kind of know how their pregnancy runs. But then you get that whole thing and then we all sit down together, so both therapists and pregnant women talk about the yeah, exchange right. and why it's important to get massage during pregnancy, which is not just a luxury. And how much? I think it's three seven five. Something like that. It's a little bit like our gym courses run about 100 to 150 pounds per day. So depending yeah. on the so course, we can look at it on the website. Oh, but I'm sure we could then probably all give you all a discount. <laughs> Great. <You can> all <laughs> if you're still watching, if you're still watching, you can call that number and tell me that you watch the webinar and you can have 10% discount. That's a great idea. <laughs> discount to you on the next two pregnancy courses, especially if you're still watching at this moment in time. <laughs> can we get a certificate because we're attending? I think that's for today. That's for me. Um, so if you can hear me, it's no, this is a webinar. So if this was a um, de streaming workshop, so one of your three hour treatment essentials or treatment expert workshops, yes you would, um, but webinars are extra, so that's just something special that we've got on for you today. Oh, <laughs> but we'll uh, get really cool, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Part of I think that's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. 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 discount, discount, 2%, great. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. I think that's else? Is that it? Okay, guys. Okay. Okay. So many right. 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 We've got a lot of hellos. We've actually from the island. I know. Thank you for coming. Hope to see you again. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.